Hey, hope everybody's doing well. I uh, wanted to share a video with you all showing some different ways that we can better help our clients right now. Um, so you can use some of these tips and they can definitely help out with your buyers, but they can also help your sellers. Um, so these tips can help save your sellers a ton of money as well. So we're going to look at a total cost analysis. So this is something that's sent out to all of our pre-approved clients. Whenever they get pre-approved, I send them a total cost analysis. Um, it's going to break down different options and show them different strategies to meet their financial goals. All right, so let's take a look at this first example here. Okay, so this is the total cost analysis. Um, so this is what we're sending out to all of our clients. Um, in this example, it's gonna show you uh, four different options. So each option will be in, in each column. Um, let me zoom in here. All right, so we're looking at, in this example, we're looking at a $440,000 house, 10% down basically with, with each option. So the different options are, it, let's say that you can get a seller credit or y'all can get a, a price reduction. So this is gonna show the client different options and it'll show um, different monthly payments um, as well as the cash to close difference. So this first example is just a assuming that y'all are buying at 440, 10% down and nothing fancy. So no seller credit, no rate buy down, anything like that. The second option is let's assume that we reduce the price down to 420, so taking 20,000 off the listing price. So that would save the client about $151 a month. So it would bring their payment down to roughly 3,333. And so let's look at the second option here. Let's say that you got a $10,000 seller credit and then we're gonna use that 10,000 towards a towards a rate buy down. So say we can buy down the rate to 5.7, He's buying it for 440, putting 10% down, so higher loan amount than option one, but it's going to save even more money than option one would because of the interest rate. Even though the loan amount is higher, he's going to end up saving more money a month and, and in the long run. Plus, so how this helps your sellers is instead of your seller having to give away 20,000 off the off the list price. Let's say they only need to give um, in this example, I think it was two points or, or buying down two points, which this would be about $7,000. So say the seller agreed to pay two points, buy them down to 5.75. That's going to save them $192 a month. That's going to save them more money than the seller giving away 20 grand or taking 20 grand off the list price. So cheaper option for your seller and it benefits the buyer. So it's it's a win-win for both of them. Third option is let's say that you can get the full 20. The, the seller agrees to take 20,000 off the purchase price. Instead of doing that, what I would suggest is take 10,000 off the list price and use the other 10 towards that rate buy down like we looked at in option two. This would save them the most money overall. Uh, loan amount would now be 387. Um, cash to close would stay the same and really all, all the options across the board, but this would save them $263 a month. Now, if we scroll over just a bit, it'll give us some different options here to look at. Um, okay, so all these graphs over here, these will tell another important side of the story. In 60 months, this is basically saying with each option, how much money would you save in 60 months versus the base option? Option number three that we looked at with the $10,000 price reduction plus the rate buy down would save them $20,000 in 60 months over no discount off the price. And then also down below, it'll show you in 15 years, how much interest and mortgage insurance have you paid um, on that property? So it's also important to remember what you can do with the seller credit. So you can do a lot with the seller credit. Obviously, y'all can reduce the, the purchase price or we can use the seller credit to buy down an interest rate. We can use a seller credit to reduce the closing cost. We can use a, a seller credit for paying off buyer's debt if they have some high, high interest debt or possibly some upgrades or, or small like renovations to the property. So let's look at one more example. This is going to be a rent versus own example. So if you have a client considering waiting till interest rates come down, waiting for the, the market to tank, uh, or waiting to save up more money so they can put a larger down payment. This is really important information to share with your client so you can help educate them and help them make a good decision. I mean, it's our responsibility at the end of the day to understand everything that's happening in the market and how to how to better educate our, our clients. This is why I use tools like the total cost analysis, because it's not about selling anything. It's about showing them the information, showing them the data so they can make a good decision. For example, I met with a, um, a lady a few days ago. She has rented for her entire life. So she's paid $18.50 in rent. And when we started looking at these numbers at all that I'll get into here in just a minute, um, she was she was completely shocked on how much money that she spent already in rent. And I was showing her if you if you rent for the next five years, you're going to end up paying $117,000 in rent, which is which is absolutely crazy. No, no equity, no tax benefits, no um, wealth generation, nothing. You just get another lease at the at the end of that. So it, it's wild. So that's why it's super important to, to help show them these numbers. And, and when I put that in perspective and how much money she's paid and, and that she hasn't got anything from that, it really helped her understand that whether she's buying 
right now when rates are a little bit higher or if, is she going to wait for them to come down? Either way, if she's going to wait, she's going to pay even more money in rent and just flushing all that money down the drain. So let's let's take a look at our our second example here. OK, so this example shows um, in this first column is much like we were talking about with the um, situation I had a few days ago. So she's paying 1850 in rent. Um, so this is just going to help compare. They are looking at a $250,000 house and with about 5% down. So there's a few different options. So if they just bought it for um, $250,000 and they didn't negotiate, didn't try and get a get a seller credit, anything like that. So $250,000, their total payment would be about $2,100 a month. Let's say that they could get a $5,000 seller credit. Um, if they were to get a $5,000 seller credit, they could apply that towards their closing cost and just reduce the cash that they need at closing. Over the first example, they'd need about 20. Second example, about 15. Third example is instead of using the $5,000 credit to reduce closing cost, they can use it to buy down their interest rate. If they did that, their monthly payment would go to about $2,017 a month. So saving them $148 a month, which is a, a pretty pretty substantial amount. So let's take a look at the graphs like we did on the other option. So this is going to show in 60 months, if they continue to rent, they'll pay $117,000 in rent and get nothing. It's also going to show how much principal you would have paid on that same mortgage during that time. So they would have $17,000 paid down on that mortgage. The important graph is really down here on the, the net worth side of things. So showing in 15 years, if you continue to rent, your net worth is still zero. If you buy a property and you buy a house and you're paying it down during that time, I mean, they could have close to $280,000 in equity. So that's, I mean, that's absolutely crazy. So this total cost analysis is really just one of many tools that we're using right now to help educate our clients. I think the rent versus own is a is a really important one because it, it first time home buyers, like in the last, um, really in the last two years, six months and and beyond, I mean, they just couldn't compete. Nobody was, it was super hard for first time home buyers who didn't have a lot of money to spend to, to get into a house. They were getting outbid. They couldn't waive um, appraisal contingencies and things like that. Um, people were going above asking. And if they, if they only have 5% down or so saved up, I mean, they just just, they just couldn't compete. They were getting beat out. So even though the interest rates are higher than they were back then, um, at least now you can compete. They couldn't win back back when rates were super low. Now there's a lot more options. There's more inventory. Sellers are more likely to contribute towards um, closing costs or rate buy downs, things like that, which can ultimately benefit the benefit the buyer. And to have success in today's market, we really need to be able to use these tools and adapt and change the information that we're getting and change to the to the current market. Um, the market changed very very quickly over the last year. So being able to show our clients the information and be able to educate our clients as to what's going on and the best strategies to use to help them win is, is super important. Having good problem solving skills and be able to communicate that to our clients so we can help set our, our buyers and our seller, sellers up for success. But if you have any questions or want to look at some options, want to look at some ways to help your buyers and your sellers win, uh, feel free to reach out. Um, all my contact information is in the description and appreciate you watching.